Hey everybody and welcome back to the Curved Cabin Sabembo. In today's episode what we're going to be doing is putting in the raised panels in these curved doors. Oh man, it's been a long trip to get here I'll tell you. We're going to cut these down to size, and rip them down on the table saw and cross cut them. We have to rip these down on the table saw because they're too big. These need to be like these. I'm use this jig right here to make this little guy right here. You take this and you put your molding on like yay. You put it on the chop saw over there and you cut a miter. Boop. We have to take these and miter these on top of that. After we get rid of this little shoulder, and miter all the pieces like yay. <laughs> See all that? And you can't just set up on your chop saw and go, yeah, I'm going to cut it like this and cut it. Because it doesn't work that way because it's a curved. First, we're going to make the little jig. Then we're going to rip these down on the table saw. Then we're going to figure out what all the dimensions are. And we're going to rip these down on the table saw and cross cut them to size. I don't know why I started with the most curviest crazy one first, but uh, that's just what I do. All right, peoples. Well, let's get on with it. And here we go. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hey, everybody. So we're going to cut all this stuff on the saw right now. All these curved pieces. And as I always say, and I've said it a million times, uh, make sure you practice a weird cut first. Uh, put it on the saw and actually practice doing it and see how it feels. Okay, so I'm going to do that right now with this piece. All right, so I was sitting here, I'm like, oh, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. I can cut it, no problem, no problem, no problem. Oh, damn it. When the table saw ends and my bench starts, there's a bit of a gap. What the hell am I going to do now? Well, I could do a couple of things. I can make a jig, so this whole thing will ride in there and it'll be longer and we can just cut it that way. I could do that. Or, or I could take a piece of quarter inch and do like this. This is kind of long. Let me see if I got another shorter one. I'm going to use this one right here. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to roll this down. And I think it'll be okay. And then all I'm going to do, I'm just going to double stick to tape this down to the top. One there, put that down. One over here. We just need to cover that little gap. And right about there. All right, now we're going to do this. Uh, turn this on, raise the blade. And you say, why did you put it up so high? Well, you even got to go higher. See the arch in this, Johnson? It might start out low, but as you get going, it goes way up. Got to be careful of that blade. It's kind of nasty. All right, here we go. Hopefully everything goes well. That noise I'm getting this. <laughs> That's a fairly square cut. That's so weird. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put them on the joiner. I'm gonna actually join them like this. The last time I joined it like this, it was a little weird. So I'm gonna join them like this as it goes through on the joiner. All right, time for the piece of Reese's pieces. Put those together. That's pretty close. So now what we're going to do is we're going to mark these up so we can cut them on the table saw. I've got my two center lines. This is the center of the panel. You can see just by the end, all these seams lined up when I glued these together a million years ago that, uh, yeah, so that's the center. And what we want to do is when we want these centers to match, right? So we want to know where the centers are so we can mark over whatever this distance is here. Okay. That we got for the opening. Uh, we want to do, uh, figure out what that is. So this says uh, 12 and 11 sixteenths. So this one's 12 and 5 eighths. 12 and 5 eighths. And we're going to, this one's the right one. This one's the left one. So they're different by a sixteenth of an inch. The depth of the rabbit is one quarter of an inch, right? So that equals a half. 
You never want to put your panel in tied up against the, uh, the styles because yeah, it'll expand and it'll crack your door. So you always want like a 16th of an inch gap on both sides. Uh, so that half inch would actually be more like, you know, three eighths. But what we're going to do is we're going to do that later. For right now, we're just going to cut it. I got him. Fruit fly dead. <laughs> Chalk that one up. Chink. Where were we? Oh, yeah. So we just want to, we're just going to fit them till they're tight. And then we'll, what we'll do is we'll join them down later and edge sand them or whatever it takes to make them fit. So decimal points. Everybody know their decimal points? So 12 and 11 sixteenths is 12.6875. Right? And then you add plus 5 to that. Plus 0.5, which is a half inch. That's 13. And 3 sixteenths. I got it. I got my spectacles are dirty. Okay, so now we have... 13 and 3 sixteenths, and we have to subtract two of these guys. We have 13 in that, and then we subtract, what did I say these were? A one and three eighths, right? So that's two and three quarters. Minus 2.75. That is 10 and 7 sixteenths. So that means that this panel, this is the left one, right? And that's the left door. 10 and 7 sixteenths. So we got the center line, so we're going to divide that by two. Divide that by 2, 5.21875. Okay, so it's a 32nd. So that's what we're going to do. So the 5.21875 uh, is 7 30 seconds. So we're going to make this uh, 5 and 3 sixteenths. And it'll just be a little gappy, and that's fine. So I have the line right here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but this is at 5 and 3 sixteenths. Putting the line there. I'm going to do the same over here, 5, 3, 16 Oh, for God's sakes, now it's moving. Don't move. It's all precarious. Okay, and the way to cure this precariousness, I'm going to show you right now. This is a trade secret, so don't tell anybody. For God's sakes. Shh. If you want to do anything curved, and you want to work on stuff curved, and not have it flip all over the place, God, you build it on your damn jig. Eh? Eh? Eh. That way it won't rock and roll like it just did on me. So here we go again. Five and three sixteenths. Put it on the center. I'm holding it down at the very edge here. And I'm just going to roll it over and mark it. Okay? And there it is. So when I go to cut this, I'm actually going to put this on this side and we're going to measure over to here because this side's already jointed it. I already jointed it. And it's at 11 and an eighth. So I'm actually going to write right here 11, one eighth of an inch. I'm going to just check it again because I only get one shot at it. And I can actually bend this down. See that? 11 and an eighth. See how, how do I want to do this? I can either cut it face up or face down. It's much easier when you cut it face down because you can just set this on the you can just set this on the thing like that and cut it. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cheat. Cheating is allowed. It's woodworking. You can do whatever you want. As long as you come out looking smarter than the other guy, you're okay. <laughs> Alright so here see this line here that I put right there? I'm going to take this right here. I'm gonna drag it down to the end. I'm going to take that and I'm going to put a little line that way. I'm going to do the same on this side. And I should probably flip flop them because uh, that's just the way it always works. You mark it on one side and it always comes out. You have to do it on the other side and backwards and all that other crap. It's just the way it goes. Now, if I did this correctly, I'd be using my center finder to get that line. Because that center finder will actually carry you on your radius uh, almost to a 90 degree angle. All right, so here, we're going to use the center finder. We put both the panels together, and we're going to do like this. And this will give us our mark that we want to have. And you can use a square. It's pretty much almost the same. You can use the square. It just rock and rolls on it a little bit, and it might not be totally accurate. If you can see that or not, we've got the marks out there. Boom, we got them there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut on the table saw. I'm going to put the line back here. And we're just going to 
put it down on the table saw like that and probably put a little wedgie on this side once we figure out what that is and I'll show you how I go about doing that. Here, look at that. Okay, so let's say this is the table saw table. I can also do this. I can take this guy right here, slipper dipper under there, boop, because that is the uh, angle of the dangle. That's how I made all the other moldings. But if you see that right there, those two little marks, if I made a stick with that angle on it, whatever this angle is right here, uh, and then put it up against the table saw, that's probably how I'm going to, well, that's, that is how I'm going to cut these. Because that way I'll have the right height that I need. Uh, they'll have the angle on it, and I can just ride it up against the whole table saw. And then I can cut this square, then flip it up and join it on the joiner, just like it's no, just like it's nobody's business downtown tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, so that's how we're going to go about it, if that made any sense. We uh, figured out where our centers were. We used the jig to make, uh, to build this. And that's when we go to run all this molding. And we're going to put all these curved pieces on there. And we're going to lay it out. This is exactly how we're going to do it. Let me see. So you can see it on that side. See that? Yeah, a little, uh, little bump out. That's the way it's going to be. It's going to be cool. And we're going to use the jig to lay out the whole thing. And we're going to miter it and build everything on this jig. Then we're going to use the domino machine from the backside, and we'll probably just tape all the molding onto it, if I can, with my, you know, my tape trick that I do on everything, uh, because it's, it's curved and uh, crazy. Where this goes and this goes together like that, we'll probably have to like, uh, pinch them down using uh, these little guys. So on the miter, we'll just go burp, right on the tongue and use these like we would use the face frame uh, clampers. I'm going to do that. And we'll do all this tomorrow. It's, uh, it's almost 6 o'clock. I'm going to go find a hunk of wood and figure out, uh, yeah, I'm going to do that right there. I'm going to make that right now. Um, I might film it on the GoPro or I might flip you around. It's just make a little angled piece. It's not that big a deal. And then we'll use that on the saw tomorrow when we go to cut these down. Boom. And then we'll have a... Uh, that'll be awesome. Okay, so yesterday we were talking about cutting these down and I put my center line on there and I marked everything out. What I have here is a piece of scrap uh, cherry. That's an inch and a half by 11 sixteenths. That's the height I need off the table here to get this to cut squarely. And now, uh, what do you think I'm gonna do with this piece of wood? <laughs> Any guesses? I'm gonna use double stick tape and attach this to my fence. And I'm gonna show you on the GoPro, which is standing right here, my trusty GoPro, what it looks like from this side and how it lines up with these little uh, these little silly marks right here. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. If you can see this right here, uh, look, I'll put it up on the screen right here. You can see where my pencil line is, all right? Uh, the way I got that mark is when I, you saw me yesterday, I just used my center finder and marked it like that. And you can also use the back end of your square or something, something that's kind of square, and just to, just to double check to make sure you're not too far off. Um, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna put on our mask. Flip on the magic button and make a cut and see how it works. And hopefully it'll all work out right. Because uh, if not, uh, the center is not going to be lined up properly. All right, here we go. Against the fence, here we go. Came out pretty dang square, pretty nice. So I'm going to go join this on the joiner, just, just like this, just like that. Boom, the fence is here, and I'm just going to join it. I'm going to put this up against the fence, like so, and away we go. There it is. This is the cut. Okay, so now this stick I don't think is going to work exactly the same because uh, the width of the panel. So I'm going to set this up over here. I remember the other day I said about having to put things on the back side and the front side and one on the top and one on the bottom. Well, this is, this is the case right here because now if I want to line this up here, I have to do it kind of like this and I can't really see very well. So I'm going to transfer all this down to the bottom and the back so I can set it on here like I should have done yesterday. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. I'm just going to use my square here. It's a little fat of 10 and 5 sixteenths. And that's okay. That's the way it's going to be. Put this over like this. Put this here. 
I'm just going to take this and move this down like this here. And that's basically just a, a reference. So this says 10 and 7 16 across the front. The back would be probably 10 and 3 8. I'm going to make it a little fat. All right, there we go. So we can join off a little bit in case it's a little askew. We'll just take this off and just check this. Yeah, see, it's a little, this needs to go down a little bit. And the reason that is, is because the radius got a little bit, uh, maybe I should do the other one. I think I will. Because uh, what happens is when you, uh, the radius was bigger and it was this big. And then as the radius gets smaller, we have to lower this end to make it uh, more square. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take the other panel, figure out where I need to cut it, uh, go ahead and cut that with this thickness because they're pretty close to the same. And then I'm going to rip this down a little bit. I'll figure out what that is. So it's 11 16 now. I might take it down to 5 8 Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. That looks a lot better. I would think it would be more like 5 8 Yeah, 5 8 yeah, that looks a hell of a lot better. So what we're going to do now, move this guy. I'm going to take my piece of wood right here. And I'm going to raise the blade up. And we're just going to rip it down to 5 8 All right, so we just use this as a depth gauge to figure out how deep we want it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some uh, double stick tape, attach it to the fence just like I did before and I'll be right back. So I put the double stick tape on there, we ripped it down, all that neat stuff. I got my square on there, I'm gonna turn this on. Hopefully it comes out and it'll be over here somewhere. So you can see, it looks fairly square as you get closer to it, boom. Uh, pretty close to the pencil line. Whether the pencil line's perfectly square or not, nah, I don't know. But uh, it, it'll be close enough for what we need to do. We can always adjust it later. Because we're going to have a little bit of slop in these raised panels. Uh, but first we just got to get it cut and then start working on the molding. Because molding takes a while. So there you go. Uh, fingers crossed. Make sure your stuff's locked down into place. This one's the smaller one. So the next one we have to bump it out a little bit. Here we go. Magic button. I'm pushing this through I'm just putting pressure straight down like I would cut any other piece of wood because this little piece of hunk of wood right here has really helped me out um, keeping it to the angle that I want and you can see it's a little bit tight on the top compared to the bottom up here you can see it but like I said we'll fix it we'll figure it out um, after I join it and then I'm gonna double check everything and we're just gonna cross cut these to size whatever that is I forgot to figure it out and we'll do that next so the magic number is 14 and 5 eighths. I already have my fence set at 14 and 5 eighths, ready to go. So this is the top. I'm gonna write on the face now, T-O-P, because this is gonna get cut off. And this is the bottom. Okay, yeah, because I want the flames, I want these flames going up. Okay, so we're gonna find out how long these guys really are. And they're 15 and 3 eighths. Yeah, bigger, bigger than I need. So if we have uh, 14 and 5 eighths is what we're set to and that's what we need. We can cut a little bit off each one, right? So I don't know if you guys have seen this before or not. This is my double miter gauge uh, production chop saw cutting thingamajigger bobber. <whistles> Everything's a thingamajigger bobber. So what this is, is uh, I get lazy sometimes and I don't want to use that. I did it again. Look, I need to have my hands are backwards. Oh my God. So from time to time, I don't feel like dragging out old Betsy over there is buried. Uh, it weighs 45 pounds because it's huge. So I just get out my double miter gauge uh, production cross-cutting uh, championship team cross-cutting sleds things. So I got two miter gauges. I'm um, just double checking them here to make sure they're both parallel with each other. And they are, and they're square to the fence with grandpa's old square. If that ain't square, nothing square. And what I do is I've actually done this before. So we got a one tooth above, right? 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through here and I'm going to actually cut this. Oh man, look at that. It barely clears it. That's pretty good. It already clears it. So I have a zero clearance fence on this one right here. And I'm making sure that this one doesn't, uh, you know, get in the way because I don't want to hit metal, especially with the saw stop. And what I do is hopefully it'll fit in here. I'm not sure if it will or not. Oh, it will. This pencil line right there lines up with uh, this cut in the saw. And I take this and I just hold on to it. Oops. And I cross cut it, push it over to this side and cross cut it again. And it will be to size. <laughs> you want to see it? Okay, here we go. Magic button. Oh. Oh. Magic button. Sheesh. You got to yell it a little louder. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to line this up with this mark here. All right, now I'm going to move this over here like this. Move this up and move this there. Boom, there you go. Five eighths. I'm going to wash it in there. All lined up, there you go. And there we go. Oh, voila. That's how you use the double miter gauge uh, production workstation. Boop, boop. Cross got that one, right? And that one's good. And then you cut it to size with this one. And there you go. Cheap and easy. Uh, you don't have to build a sled or anything. You just get, this came off my disc sander, which cost nothing. And this came with the saw, which cost a million dollars. But it's worth it. All right, there we go. And the next thing we shall do is put on some molding. Uh, hopefully. And uh, we'll see you in a minute. Okay, magic, no, that's the wrong magic button. Sugar, I do that all the time. <laughs> Barking spider. Oh God. <laughs> Nasty. Okay. Mother banana. They always call me down to one and an inch and a half. So I took a piece of a so I had a little bit of start over. And this is not this is not a scientific method or anything. This is just a barking spider. Can't put more on, but you can join more off. You just call me a moron. <coughs> Barking spider. Anybody know why? Guess. Go ahead, go ahead. All right, I'll tell you. Barking spider. <laughs>